Welcome back. We're talking about the Iran nuclear talks. Joining us from Vienna is Mohammed Morandi. He's the Dean of the Faculty of the World Studies at the University of Tehran. And with us here in Washington is the author and former U.S. negotiator with Iran, Hillary Mann Leverett. Let's pick up with you, Hillary. You know, not a done deal yet, but we've been known the sticking points for months. Sanctions are key for Tehran. There's this feeling that they have been maligned, their economy has suffered, their people have suffered, they need to be lifted right away. Mm -hmm. The West have said, look, we'll do this in phases and we'll snap them back if there's non-compliance. Right. Can we square this circle? Because the snapback is really worrying a lot of people. Yes, and I think at this point, many of the, the concerns that the U.S. put on the table that, that we had about Iran's program have largely been satisfied. So those issues, I think, are really uh, in a corner. And the, the concerns at this point do come down to sanctions, to timing and to what sanctions are going to be lifted at when, when. And potentially, there may still be some concerns about access to sites in Iran. The, issue is that the United States has staked itself out, particularly after the last um, framework understanding mm -hmm. was reached in Lausanne, Switzerland, that uh, sanctions would be lifted in stages commensurate with steps that Iran would take. So essentially, the US, U.S. wanted to set it up as the U.S. would reward Iran for each step it took. Iran, understandably, has a different approach that there should be uh, this should this uh, this uh, agreement is among equals and should be reached in an atmosphere of mutual respect where things are done simultaneously. So the question is how to, how to bridge that. And I think one of the very important bridging proposals that's been put forward, and I, I think at this point a lot of work has been done, is that there is there some preparatory work on each side that would need to be done before an agreement is implemented, is agreed, is signed. And each of those things, agreed, implemented, signed, can be a different date. And then there can be preparatory work before each one of those things. And within that, the negotiators, I think, have found a lot of room to bridge, uh, to bridge the two different views. Dr. Morandi, is this a red line for the Iranian people that sanctions must go immediately uh, and quickly uh, because of the suffering that Tehran has experienced over the last decades? Yes, the Iranians, uh, this is a red line. The Iranians have said that economic and financial sanctions must be uh, lifted immediately and that um, the, the removal of those sanctions must take place simultaneously with actions taken by Iran. As Hillary rightly pointed out, the Iranians say that we're not going to reconfigure uh, different parts of uh, Natanz or remove the core of the Arak reactor, which will be costly and time-consuming, and reversing that process would be also very expensive and time-consuming, and then afterwards discover that the Americans don't want to carry out their side of the mm. bargain. Mm. So for the Iranians, it ha the, the, everything has to work in parallel and in stages. And at the same time, the Iranians are saying a long uh, time frame, 15, 10, 15, 20 years, is simply too much. If the Iranians are going to carry out significant acts to uh, to create trust and and to ease the situation, then uh, the Americans must agree to a timetable that's much more reasonable. Uh, a, a final, another point that's really important is that uh, if they're uh, the issue of, in the issue of snapback, the, the Iranians the Iranians are saying that we will have to have the same right. If the Americans want to snap back then the Iranians would be able to do so too. You mean in terms of uh, uh, increasing uh, activity for a self-professed peaceful nuclear program? There's also another U.S. demand, which is access to military sites in Tehran uh, and, and the rest of Iran. Um, that is a very sensitive issue. Could you see some sort of inspections, whether it be through the International Atomic Energy Agency going forward? Uh, well, uh, the, what the Iranians are saying is that there, there may be a possibility for some sort of managed access where the Americans are unable or the IAEA is unable to uh, go into military sites to see what activities are taking place because, you know, when the United States or when the U.S. president uh, says all options are on the table, the Iranians believe that it, it would be foolish for them to allow the Americans uh, into any uh, defensive defense site or any other sensitive site. Also, the Israeli regime constantly threatens Iran as well, and that's another reason. So, and and of course, in the past, uh, Iranian scientists were murdered because Iran had passed on 
information to the IAEA and they leaked it to Western intelligence agencies who then leaked it to Israel. So the Iranians are very sensitive about uh, say, you know, uh, protecting their citizens as well as their national security. So the Iranians are saying inspections are out of the question, but there may be a middle way forward where they can take uh, samples of soil to, and solve the problem. Uh, Dr. Moran, uh, thank you, Dr. Moran. He, he, he paints out very well the suspicion still. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he talked about assassination of Iranian mm -hmm. nuclear scientists. We know that happened. The Stuxnet, right. for example, mm -hmm. virus as right. well. Um, so there was a lot of sort of Cold War stuff going on right. here as well. What if there's no deal? Could this Cold War that's been happening turn very hot very quickly? It could, and I'm, I am very concerned about that. If you look at American public opinion polling, Americans, uh, by two to one, support a negotiated deal with, with Iran. But that's, very, that's just surface data. If you actually go further, the majority of Americans polled aren't sure what they think. Mm. And if you put on the table that Iran is pursuing or has acquired nuclear weapons, the, the data completely reverses. And two to one, Americans would actually favor military strikes on Iran. So the fluid, there's a fluidity in American public opinion which could be led a certain way. I served We've in seen the, this before. Yes, <laughs> I served in the Bush White House with the same exact thing. Before the invasion of Iraq, American public opinion was fluid. We were all for attacking Afghanistan in retaliation for 9-11, but not necessarily at invading Iraq. But as soon as the Bush administration decided that they could have a, a sellable reason that there were nuclear weapons, chemical weapons, biological weapons, and they could see the public opinion turning in their favor, then the decision was taken. So you could have, I think, and you, I think you see the ground being laid in Washington to delegitimate any prospective deal. So in 2016, if a Republican is, is elected, he would then be able to lead the American public to supporting some sort of military strike. So I think the risk is there. The concern I have is that the United States is nowhere near as powerful as at least it thought it was in 2003. Our ability to do that militarily, financially, and politically is at an all-time low. We will do even more damage to ourselves than we did in 2003 if we attempt to do that. Dr. Morandi, I want to bring you in here on this very point because the U.S. has uh, been saber rattling a little bit as these talks go down to the wire, saying that they have these bombs, the bunker busting bombs that could basically destroy Iran's nuclear facilities very quickly. But Tehran has countered and said, look, we're, we're increasing our ballistic missile defense to the south of the country, obviously looking at Israel as well. Is there, while the talks go on behind you, there's still preparation that this could go pretty hot pretty quickly, right? Hillary is right. Uh, the Americans are not nearly as strong as they were before, and the Iranians recognize that. And the Iranians are much stronger today than they ever were before. Uh, the, uh, the, the view in Tehran is that these, uh, the news about these uh, weapons to attack uh, Iranian uh, peaceful nuclear installations, these are basically uh, an attempt to wage psychological warfare. And I don't think it's going to have any effect on the Iranian public or on the negotiating team. In fact, it only creates greater mistrust towards the United States. It basically reinforces the notion that the United States is not a friendly country. It's not trustworthy. Even when you negotiate with it, it threatens you, and it threatens you with death and destruction. So uh, I, I, I personally believe that the Americans are uh, miscalculating right. by using the language of violence and threatening Iran. If the Americans were to be serious and to move towards rapprochement and to change their, their uh, attitude towards uh, Iran, I think uh, they would benefit a lot more. Yeah. Uh, but I... so far, you know, we, we don't see that happening. One last question. If this deal does go through, could you see the Americans opening up, reopening an embassy in Tehran, even U.S. President Barack Obama being in Tehran before the end of his term? I'll ask this to both of you. Dr. Morandi first. Well, I think there, there are still many grievances in Iran. Mm. And since the United States is allowing its allies like Turkey to support extremists, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and many people are being uh, killed uh, across the region, the Iranians continue to be suspicious of the United States. I think this would be a very important step but I think for the Iranians, the United States has a long, long way to go to gain Iranian trust. Hillary? 
Well, this is why we wrote our book, Going to Tehran, Why the U.S. Must Accept the Which Islamic I must Republic. recommend to everyone, by the way. Excellent. It, and it makes this critical point that Nixon and Kissinger understood about China. You have to go to show this real acceptance that you're committed, you're serious to rapprochement. You have to go. Once you make the visit, you can't take it back. But a visit is different than reopening an embassy. When Nixon and Kissinger went to China, there was no real discussion about reopening an embassy. That was too much too soon. It took another seven years. That's and right. that may Counter, happen yeah. here. And I think that would be good. There's no rush to reopen an embassy, but there does need to be something that the United States can put on the table that it can't take back psychologically. And I think President Obama going to Tehran, or maybe even Secretary Kerry going to Tehran, would be just that. And psychologically, they're almost there already. Uh, I hope Hil so. <laughs> Hilary Mann Leverett here in Washington. Dr. Morandi at the talks in Vienna. Thank you very much. That's it for this edition of The Heat. But the conversation does continue online. Join us at CCTV's Facebook page to comment on this or any other show. Or chat with us on Twitter at CCTV underscore America. I'm Nathan King in Washington. Thanks for being with us.